Hi and welcome to another tutorial. In today's lesson we'll learn how to recreate this cool looking Starry Night effect using Adobe After Effects. So anyways guys, let's jump in. So the first thing that we have to do here is we have to create a new composition. So I'm just going to be running with a 1920 by 1080 pixel document at around 15 seconds. Just press OK. Once we have that, then we need to import our assets. So the first thing that I've done is I've went to Pexels, which is a stock footage site and I've downloaded this picture and all I'm going to do is import it into After Effects. Cool. So now that I have my picture inside of After Effects, all I have to do is drag it to the timeline. Now obviously this picture is very big, so I'm going to press S for scale and I'm just going to bring the size of this picture just so it fits the frame just like that. The next thing that I need to do is I need to duplicate this layer. So I'm going to press Command D to duplicate that. And then what I'm going to do is on the top layer, I'm going to come over to Layer, Precompose, and then I'm going to call this Star Map. And I'm going to move all attributes to the new composition. And now if I double click that, now I have an image in a pre-comp in with the image that I was using before. So now that we have that, the first thing that we are going to put on this image is an effect called curves. So what I'm going to do is on the RGB channel is I'm just going to click and drag until all of the background is kind of um, not visible and all you're left with is just the stars. So now once you have that, the next thing that you need to do is you need to create a new solid and we're going to call this uh, fractal. And obviously we are going to search for the effect called Fractal Noise. And we're just going to change a few settings in here. We're going to bring up the contrast to about 650. We're going to bring down the brightness to negative 0.3. And we are also going to go to the transform settings and bring down the scale to let's say about 30. So now if you've done that correctly, it will look something like this. We just now have to make it move. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the option key and click the stopwatch to bring up the expression builder over here. And then I'm going to write time asterisk, let's say 300. And so now if you've done that correctly, now you will have this fractal noise moving around your screen like that. So that's looking pretty cool. But now what we have to do is we have to combine it with our stock footage that we have over here. So now a small reminder, I am using After Effects 2023, so they have redesigned the track mat options. Um, if you don't see it, all you have to do is go toggle switches. Um, so yeah, if you want to follow along with this tutorial, make sure you update. If not, you will have to figure out how to do the track mats on your own. So the easiest way to do this now is you can drag, drag the pick whip and click it onto your layer that you want to create the alpha mat or whatever track mat you want and it kind of does it all for you which is good. Now this is the alpha mat so nothing is moving there but if I click on this again now it's the luma mat and so now we will get you know the little stars moving as well and we can also invert that as well by clicking this uh, button over here. So now once we have that, we'll fix up that a little bit later, but we'll just go and have a look at what that looks like with the rest of our composition. So the first thing that we're going to have to do here is we are going to have to change the blend mode to screen. So now that we've changed the mode to screen, the next thing that we need to do to actually make the stars appear is we need to search for an effect called glow. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop the glow threshold to zero and we're going to maybe bring up the radius to about 15 and then what we're going to do is we are going to duplicate that and well once we duplicate that twice you can see now the glow has gone pretty crazy so what we need to do is we need to increase the threshold to let's say maybe something like 20 and maybe we can uh, bring back down the radius to somewhere around 5 and so now if you've done that correctly, now you will see the sparkle in the sky and that's looking pretty good, but we have this error over here. So to fix that, what we need to do is we need to go into the star map and we need to make sure that we're on our stock footage layer. And I'm just going to come and grab the pen tool and I'm going to draw a rough mask. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm just going to make sure that it covers the area that I don't like. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down on the mask settings over here. And then I'm just going to click from add to subtract. 
And while we're here, we can just increase the feather to let's say 100. And now if you go back and if you preview that, you don't see that error that's over here. So that's looking pretty cool. So now we can move on to the shooting stars. So now for the shooting stars, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new solid. And I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna call it shooting star. And it doesn't really matter what color you pick because what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the pen tool and I'm just gonna click over here and then click over here. So I'm just drawing a straight line. And once we have that, then what I need to do is I need to search for an effect called Saber. And then what I need to do is I need to go down to customize core and change the core type to the layer mask. So now we have the Saber on that layer over there. So now what we need to do is we need to change a few of the settings over here. So I'm just gonna change the preset to narrow. So now once we've selected that preset, the next thing that we need to do is we need to change the start size and we're gonna put that down to zero and the end size, we're gonna bump that up to 200. So now we have a nice taper on that line. So now all we have to do is animate this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna animate this value over here, the start offset. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to start it at zero, press the stopwatch. I'm just gonna press U to bring up my keyframes, move to about two seconds, and then just move forward in time until it gets to 100%. And so now if you've done that correctly, now you have this cool shooting kind of animation, but it doesn't collapse. So what we need to do is we need to animate the end offset. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the stopwatch for end offset and then I'm going to move forward to two seconds and then I'm also going to increase that to let's say 100% and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to offset those keyframes slightly. So if I press U and see all my keyframes, you can see that now we have that cool shooting star kind of animation and that's looking pretty cool. But we're gonna make this look even better with a little bit of the graph editor. So what we need to do is we need to highlight all those keyframes, go to animation and then go to keyframe assistant, go to easy ease. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the graph editor and then I'm gonna grab these two points, move them a bit closer to the middle and then these two points and move them a bit closer to the middle. So now I'll, I'll have this kind of faster, you know, accelerating kind of uh, animation. Now, obviously that is very slow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight all those keyframes, hold Alt, and then just bring them down to about two seconds just to make it a little bit faster. So that looks a little bit better. So now obviously you can't see it with the rest of the composition. So what we need to do is we need to change the mode to add. And so now if you've done that correctly, now you will see that shooting star in the background. And that looks pretty cool, but what we can do is we can duplicate that and then move that around anywhere and even scale it down slightly, something like that. So now we have two shooting stars. Maybe we'll offset it a little bit just like that. And we have one there, one there. Cool. So now the last thing that we're gonna do is we are going to add a planet. So we're gonna pop the planet over here and the planet is pretty easy to do. All we need to do is go to project and we're gonna create a new comp and we're gonna call it planet. And the first thing that we need to do here is we need to import our asset. So this asset is from solartextures.com and I'll leave the link in the description. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scale it down and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search for an effect called CC Sphere and I'm just gonna bump up the size to about, I don't know, something like that. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down to the light settings and I'm just gonna change a few things here. I'm gonna change the light, the light height to about 65 and I'm gonna come down to shading and change the specular to zero. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to animate the Y rotation. So I'm going to click on the stopwatch and I'm gonna hold option and then I'm going to write time times five. And so now this will rotate our planet nicely. And so once we have that, then what we can do is we can drag that composition, the planet composition back into our main comp. I'm just gonna put it up there into that corner over there. And that's looking pretty cool and that's rotating. And what I'm gonna do to make it look a little bit better is I'm just gonna click on exclusion. 
And so now exclusion will fit inside the sky and all the stars inside there will be a darker color. So I think that looks pretty cool. So now the final thing to tie it all together is we are just going to create a new adjustment layer and I'm just going to make sure that it's on top of everything. And the first adjustment layer that we are going to put on here is going to be noise. And we're just going to bump that up to let's say about 6%. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another new adjustment layer. And in this one, I'm going to search for Lumetri color. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to the creative settings and then I'm just going to pick one of these options over here. So the cold one is maybe a bit too much, but what we can do is we can just bring down the value to something like 60. And there we have it. There we have a nice starry night with some shooting stars and a planet that rotates. So anyways, guys, I hope you learned something in this tutorial. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time.